All right, so this starts just simply with like your measurement, right? It says measure AB to the nearest eighth inch. So each of these little tick marks would be one eighth. So if I'm past the one, then it's one, that's two, that's three eighths. So this should be one and three eighths. Number two says find CE. So this is using our segment addition postulate. If I just add together CD and DE, seven plus 15, I get 22. Number three says plot the points F, G, H, and J. So I'm going to use my coordinate plane over here. F is negative 3, 5. Go back 3, up 5. G is 2, 5. H is 3, 1. And J is 3, negative 3. And then it says... Determine if F, G, and H, J are congruent. If I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one's 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, this one's 4. So they are not congruent. And then it says explain, and it's because they have different lengths or not the same lengths. Okay, and then number four says find KL. So you can either do the absolute value of K minus L, or I can go to the bigger one, which is four, and subtract from it the smaller one, which would be negative three, four minus a negative three, four plus three, which is seven, the length of KL. Okay, so here's chapter one, section three, the midpoint distant formulas, and it's gonna cover exactly those things. What are the midpoint? Uh, how to find the midpoint using a formula, and then what's the distance and how to find the distance or length of a segment using the distance formula. Okay, again, so midpoint of a segment is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments, and then the bisector of a segment is a point, ray, line, segment, or line, or plane that intersects a segment at its midpoint. I'm not moving yet. I'm going to give you a visual. Okay? So if I had a segment, first of all, I can't do this to a line, right? Can you find the, the middle of a line? Can you find the middle of a line? No, why not? Because it doesn't end. How could you possibly find the middle of something that doesn't end, right? So the midpoint would be something that would be like here. And there's two ways, three ways, really, that you'll know that that's the midpoint. Either it's going to say somewhere, this point is the midpoint of the segment. Or it will give you something like, this is 5 and this is 5, so I know that's dead center. Or you'll see little congruency marks on my segment, and I'll know that that's cut into two congruent parts. So this point, let's say this point A, is the midpoint of MC segment MC. A bisector would be a point, so that point is actually a bisector of this segment. It could be a line. So I can say that line L is bisecting or is the bisector segment MC. I could have made that blue line a ray, and a ray can bisect it. I could have extended this and made it a plane and pretend the plane is running through the line at its center. All of those would be bisectors of the segment. Can you bisect a line? No. No, because it goes on. Good. Can't find the middle. Can't bisect a line. Can you bisect a ray? No. What's wrong with a ray? It goes on. It stops at one point, but it doesn't go on the other end. So you can't bisect a ray. Can you bisect a plane? Yes. No. Planes don't end. Okay. So the only thing we're focused on right now, the only thing that we that we know now that we can bisect, is a segment. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anybody still coming down? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this example gives you the picture of a skateboard. It says in the skateboard design. VW segment VW bisects segment XY at point T, and XT is 39.9 centimeters. So if XT, which goes from 
here to here is 39.9 centimeters. It wants you to find x, y. There's two ways to do it, right? What's one way? Multiply it by two, right? Because it's doubled, right? The other way would be add it. 39.9 plus 39.9. Whoops, I wrote eight. I'm getting ahead of myself. Nine. Either way. So you see the little congruency marks were there too. So even if it didn't tell you that it bisected it, you would know from the congruency marks. Okay, example two says that M is the midpoint of segment VW. Find the length of VM. How do I do it? And what would your equation say? Okay, so the equation would say, because these two are equal, 4x minus 1 equals 3x plus 3. Subtract the 3x. x minus 1 would equal 3, and add the 1, and x equals 4. But it's not asking for x, it's asking for the value of vm, or the length of vm. So I would take this expression here and plug the 4 back in. 16 minus 1 is 15. Now, it wouldn't have mattered if I actually plugged it back in here, right? Because these are equal. I should end up with the same, which I do. Okay, it's a good way to check them. So, Vm, the length of Vm is 15. Okay, so in last night's homework, you had to find, like, the length of a segment if they were horizontal or vertical, right? You could probably cut something in half if it was horizontal or vertical. But if you have a coordinate point, so if I have an xy and an xy, and I wanted to find the midpoint of it, okay, I would use this, which is the midpoint formula. So if I give you two coordinates, like x is, you know, like 2, negative 1, and then 1, 10, to find the midpoint of them, you would add the two x's and divide by 2, and that's going to be the x-coordinate. Add the two y's and divide by 2. So the answer for these will be a coordinate, like 2, negative 3, or something like that. It's going to be an xy coordinate. All right, so example 3 says, find the coordinates of the midpoint of the segment that joins the given points. So these are your endpoints, and you want to find the middle of them. So the first one should be pretty easy, right? We're just adding the two x's, so I would get 0 plus 6 divided by 2, and then I'd get 4 plus a negative 2 and divide it by 2. So I'd get 6 over 2, 2 over 2, which becomes 3, 2. Nope, 3, 1. Everybody good so far? Yeah? And then you get to letters, and how many of you freaked out? Be honest, right? You're like, holy crap, there's letters? We're back to this. Yes, there's going to be letters and stuff. All right, so you want to set it up the same way. You're not going to have an actual value at the end, but I would take the x here and add it to the x here. So I'd get b plus 2 plus 3b over 2, put a comma, and then add my y's, 0 and 6. 0 plus 6 divided by 2. And then on the left, combine my like terms. So b plus 3b is what? 4b plus 2 over 2, and on the right, 6 over 2. Then what? Can these be simplified? Yeah, right? On the left-hand side, 2 goes each into each of those. So this would be 1, 2, 1. So I'd get 2b plus 1, and then 6 over 2 would be 3. So I would only do this if the 2 went into both, if that was 4b plus 1 over 2, I would leave it alone. It goes in the 4b, but it doesn't go over, it goes, doesn't go into the 1. So don't be scared, don't be scared of the letters. We took our x1 and our x2, we added it together, we divided by 2, and we got, this is our xm, this is the x coordinate of my midpoint. 
And then we did the same thing with y. y1 and plus y2 divided by 2, and we got the y coordinate of the midpoint. Yes? Everybody sees that, right? So now all we're doing, OK, so this is when midpoint gets a little bit trickier. This time they're saying the midpoint of jk is m, and one end point is j. Find the coordinates of n point k. So you're actually missing like the x2 and the y2, let's say. So I think, in my opinion, the easiest way to set these up, I almost make like a little chart, OK? So typically I would say that if this is my midpoint, this is going to be my x, m, y, m. OK, that would be the x coordinate of the midpoint and the y coordinate of the midpoint. One end point is this. So I'm going to make this my x1, y1. And then typically I would do x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. And the result of this would be xm comma ym. You with me so far? So I actually split this. Like I say, okay, I'm going to focus on the x's and I focus on the y's. So the x1 I know, that's 1. The x2 I don't know. That's going to stay x2. And then it goes over 2. And this should equal my xm, which is the x coordinate of my midpoint. In this case, it's 2. I'll do it again. Ready? So typically, when I plug numbers in here, it gives me this, right? You with me? So if I take the x1 and I add it to the x2 divided by 2, my answer would be the x coordinate of my midpoint. Yes? You with me so far? No. Okay. So all I do... No? No. Okay. So go back. Now I'm missing one of my x's, but I have the answer. You with me? So the x1 plus x2 divided by 2 usually gives me xm, which is the x coordinate of my midpoint. Does that make sense? And then the y1 plus y2 divided by 2 usually equals the y coordinate of my midpoint, which is ym. So all we're doing is really making two little equations there, okay? We're saying that the x1 plus the x2 over 2 should equal the x coordinate of my midpoint, and that the y1 plus y2 over 2 would equal the y coordinate of my midpoint. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now we've got to plug in those values, okay? So what's x1? One. one. We don't know x2. Divide it by 2, set it equal to, what's the x coordinate on my midpoint? Two. 2. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing for the y. Let me clean this up. Okay, so our y1 is 4 plus y2, which we don't know, over 2, and it's going to equal the y coordinate of my midpoint, which is 1. So this is 1 plus x2 over 2 equals 2. So I'm just keeping them separate. I'm going to figure out my x, I'm going to figure out my y. You could do a system of equation and get really ugly. I think that this is easier. Okay, once you get the hang of it. So now how would I typically solve the equation on the left? The 1 plus x2 over 2 equals 2. Go ahead. Multiply by 2. So I get 1 plus x2 equals 4. Then what? Subtract, Subtract the 1. So now I know x2 is 3. And then I'm going to do the exact same steps on the other side. I'm going to multiply by 2. So it cancels from here. 4 plus y2 equals 2. And then subtract the 4. And I have my y2. So the x of my other end point is 3, 2, and the y of my other end point is negative 2. If you've graphed it, then when you look at your graph, it should make sense. We're going to do another one, don't you worry. Okay, so again, I'm going to split them, right? So I'm going to work with just my axes. I'm going to say x1 plus x2 over 2 is going to equal the xm, which is the x coordinate of my midpoint. 
And then y1 plus y2 over 2 is going to equal the ym, which is the y coordinate of my vertex. I mean, of my midpoint, sorry. So then the end point is my x1, my y1, and this is my xm and my ym. So negative 1 plus x2 over 2 is going to equal 5. Multiply by 2 on both sides. This cancels. Negative 1 plus x2 equals 10. Add the 1, and my x2 is 11. Good so far. Okay. On the right, y1 is 3, plus y2 is what I don't know, divided by 2 equals 6. Multiply by 2 on both sides. And then subtract the 3. So my other end point should be 11, 9. Raise your hand if you got it right. Good. Okay. If you didn't, you get to practice in your homework, okay? And you want so this is your second formula you need to know. It's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And again, what's going to happen is you'll get given two coordinate points. It's going to ask you to find the distance between them. This time your answer is a single number or a square root if it's not a whole, if it's not, you don't have to estimate. If it's not a whole number, you will leave it under the root, okay? But where midpoint is an xy coordinate, this one is a single number. So the distance between two points is going to give you the length of a segment that connects them. So this would be my x1, this would be my y1, this would be my x2, and this would be my y2. So distance would equal the square root of x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 6, squared, plus y1, which is negative 5, sorry, y2, which is negative 5, minus a negative 3, which becomes plus 3 squared. So I'm just plugging in, simplifying what's inside my parentheses, and I get the square root of 8. Can I simplify the square root of 8? Is it a perfect square? No. How would I know if I can bring a number to the outside? Okay, this is called your factor tree. So 8 is 2 and 4, right? If you catch it there, 4 is a perfect square. You could bring it to the outside right away. If you don't, then break it down again. So you want to break it down until you get to prime numbers. And for every pair of prime numbers, one of those numbers goes to the outside. So there's two twos, which means one goes to the outside, and whatever's left over stays underneath. So the length of PQ is 2 root 2.